Hello and welcome to a humble Highland home. Thank you so much for joining me here this morning. This is definitely the season of busyness, so I've been making sure to pencil in some time to sit and enjoy my morning cuppa in the garden rather than just working in it all the time. I know that with the lifestyle that we choose to lead, there will always be things to do and we could always be busy. In the kitchen garden, there are so many things at the moment that I could be harvesting. But to keep things manageable for me, I'm going to focus on gathering the produce that needs to be used or preserved before it spoils. I'm also giving thought to areas of the garden that I'm purposely leaving the plants to complete their full growing cycle and to produce all those precious seeds. The polytunnel remains full and productive, but it's also been playing host to a drying area for the onions. In fact, everywhere I look at the moment, there's onions drying. So it's time to trim them back and tidy them up, ready for the curing process. I leave part of the dry neck to act as a seal for the top of the onion to avoid any pests or diseases getting inside. I also trim off the bottom roots and give them a tidy up and I check for any signs of mould or damp patches which can create a problem if you're going to be storing them for the longer term. I'll just check on them over the next few weeks as they continue to cure and then once they're in longer term storage I'll keep an eye on them just like I do with the rest of our stored produce. Curing just means preparing the onions for storage which it takes around about a month to do this process. All these onions will be spread out in their own trays so that there's plenty space between them and they can cure in their own time. As I come across some onions that have been maybe damaged or the necks are too thick to seal then I would just put these on one side and I'll just take them straight into the kitchen to use over the next week or so. If you've seen some of my previous videos you will have heard me speaking quite a lot about our food growing plan. It's always with a forward thinking mindset so for some for us, some for nature, some to share, and also some for the future. Especially for those colder times when fresh food from the garden can be quite limited. The cauliflower growing has been quite temperamental this year. They're definitely growing better in the polytunnel than what they are outside, which I will keep a note of for next year. The kale continues to bless us with an absolute abundance of leaves which have been used and preserved and shared with family. We still have a number of harvests yet to come but I will process this batch first which I think is going to be blanched and put in the freezer. I remember one of my aims last year was to have to use a wheelbarrow to transport the harvest for preserving and this year this has been a regular occurrence now so we are definitely heading in the right direction to where we want to be with our food growing. I grew a lot more peas this year as they are a firm favourite in our household and I've been very happy with the results. We've been eating them fresh as soon as they've been ready. I've frozen some and I've also left some so that they can dry and we'll use them as pea shoots in the winter months and also to grow the next batch for next year. 
I really enjoy a tray full of fresh pea shoots, especially in the winter months. It really is a welcome taste of summer. And lots of memories have been made this year, picking the peas and then sitting around the kitchen table and a cup of tea and a bit of a giggle while we're podding the peas. And when we run out of kitchen containers or colanders, a scoop up top works just as well as a carry container. But my nan would have once used her apron for this task. The yellow courgettes didn't do as well as I'd hoped this year. I do think there was a few issues around pollinating them, even with a helping hand with a paintbrush. But the Cucumbers have been given us a steady supply and a few to gift to others as well. We've been gathering the last of the strawberries off all the strawberry plants which have now been producing lots of runners which I have been propagating to gain some new plants along with the, some of the sweetest strawberries. What's not to love about gaining free plants? I'm continuing to harvest the carrots from two different carrot beds, one in the polytunnel and one outside. And I've been picking the biggest of the carrots, which still have lots of smaller carrots surrounding them, which will now have space to grow bigger. I personally prefer to leave carrots in the ground until I need them. I find this is the best preserving method for me, rather than harvesting them and then trying to preserve them. Even in winter time, with some good mulch as protection, the carrots are generally absolutely fine in the ground. In between the rows of carrots, I've also got some leeks growing. There's a couple of leeks that I've let go to seed, and there's some that are younger that were transplanted from an area in the polytunnel that I had used as a seed bed. So as the carrots mature and get picked, the leeks will be able to continue to grow on. As I've developed and increased the food growing spaces in the garden, I try to work as much as possible with the seasons to keep the growing spaces as full and productive as possible. It doesn't always work. There's been lots of learning experiences along the way and there always will be, but we celebrate the small wins. This salad patch was our first planting, which is about to run to seed. So I'm saving some of the leaves and I'm going to make a batch of creamy potato and lettuce soup, most of which will be destined for the freezer. We managed to harvest a few stems of broccoli but it seemed to go to seed overnight when the weather was very inconsistent. One minute it was incredibly dry and then the next minute it was very, very wet. So I'm going to remove the broccoli stems to allow space for the cabbages to spread out even further. Wherever possible, I prefer just to cut 
the stems off at the base but these are really quite tough so I just twist them out and then just firm up the soil behind them and I try to give the beds a wee tidy up as I'm harvesting. So I think this lot will keep me busy for a wee while so I will head off into the kitchen to do what I need to do to add a little bit more to our freezer and to our pantry. As always, thank you so much for joining me here today. Let's chat in the comments below. But for now, take care of yourself and others, and I'll see you in the next video. Try